today's episode. Since Ritter Insurance Marketing became one of Integrity Marketing Group's partners in 2022, we've gotten a lot of questions about what that means for agents partnered with us and for Ritter as a field marketing organization. Some of those conversations are still very fluid as that partnership continues to evolve. But the conversation we are bringing to you today between myself and Jason Myers, our West Director of Sales here at Ritter, takes a closer look at the core values of Integrity Marketing Group, how they align with Ritter's values, how we apply them to our lives, and how agents can do the same. Here's that conversation. So first and foremost, can you say your name and your title here at Ritter Insurance Marketing? It's Jason Myers, and I'm the West Director here at Ritter. Jason, it is great to have you back here on the podcast. You were one of our first guests that we had on. Very glad to have you back. For the people that might have missed that episode, can you kind of give a quick background of how you came to be in the insurance industry? Well, first of all, you know, thanks for having me back. I'm really grateful to be back on the the new rebranded set. It looks fantastic, <laughs> with all the Thank new you. colors and I remember listening to one of the prior podcasts about the new rebranding, the tent, the road, and the compass, all the symbols that tie into agent service. I've been licensed since 1998, got into insurance way back when I was in radio, and sort of used that as a background career, which has really taken off for me. I've been with Ritter over 10 years now as the West Director with a focus on California. Now, I'm assuming that you've done similar to what I did, leave the radio industry behind and kind of jumped both feet first into the insurance industry now. Yeah, well, I think the last time I was on the podcast was 2021 during the pandemic. It was kind of hard to to talk through my mask. So I'm really <laughs> grateful to be back on today post-pandemic. But first, we, we need to really ask what motivates most agents. And I, I think today we were going to talk about Integrity Marketing's five core values of integrity, family, service, respect, and partnership, and kind of tie into how do our agents reflect those values and how does it affect their giving back and really connecting with their clients? Right. We are headed into our busy season. Burnout is a very real thing. And there's something that every agent really needs to know. You've got to know your why, because that is what is going to keep you motivated as you're going through this whole busy season and really your whole career. So maybe you can tell us a little bit more about how you stay motivated and kind of maybe touch on some of those pillars. Yeah. You know, it's finding your why or your purpose really asking yourself, reflecting, why do we do what we do and asking what motivates most agents. I think Helping people remove social determinants of health is part of what we do. Equalizing, supporting access to quality care, reducing costs, coordinating extra benefits is a total service solution. That's really key to kind of placing our clients at the center of attention for their needs. And it's not single payer, I might add. That's a big debate here in California. And so, you know, we're definitely in favor of one-to-one service with our clients Mm -hmm. and sort of putting the broker on a pedestal because, you know, we can't forget why we do what we do. I mean, do we like people? Do we like talking to people? Are we good listeners? Are we curious? We teach our agents to be servant leaders and strategists. You know, salespeople who understand not to really overwhelm the clients with too much information too soon, that's sort of a roadblock for, for some newer agents. And I always coach agents in the field on how to do a good needs analysis, asking the right questions, being compliant, having patience. And I think, Sarah, you'd probably agree that patience is key. I mean, really overcoming objections and taking your ego out of the sale. I think you just had Danny Ford on where he talked about overcoming objections. And he had some really good things to say about, you know, even having the wisdom to walk away from a sale. I know knowing the difference between selling and serving. 
Oh, absolutely. I love his mentality that one of the first things he does is really reassure the client that if you don't come to a decision today, it's okay. I'll come back. I think being able to tell someone that, and like you were saying about how we are a community minded kind of industry, if you want to connect with people, you've got to do those sort of things and make those sort of considerations in order to appear as human. And that human connection is really what this industry is all about. And like you said, you know, when I was getting out of radio and kind of coming into a new industry, I knew I wanted to go somewhere, but I also knew that I wanted to make a difference. I didn't want to just, you know, be doing a job. Yeah. I think at the end of the day, agents are educators, right? So if we play our cards Mm -hmm. right, we become lifelong friends of the families that we serve and we become community leaders ourselves as brokers. I was a broker for many years before joining the distribution channel at Integrity and Ritter. And, you know, it just seems like it's a lot more difficult to be a broker these days for a lot of reasons, from the stricter compliance to navigating the CMS landscape with regard to the call recording, right? The naming, the scopes, weeding out the bad actors, all the rest of it. But fortunately, I think Ritter was at the forefront of providing those technological solutions to help. And we have to also thank our friends at NABIP and CAHIP at the Mm -hmm. state level. Uh, They do so much great advocating for brokers across the U.S., lobbying, and also continuously leading a positive narrative on behalf of agents. So if you are an agent and you are listening to to this podcast, we do encourage you to become a member of your local NABIP if possible. Right. And I think that making sure that we are providing those tools and resources when you say it has become difficult, but really rely on the resources that you have. Like you said, there are insurance organizations that you can meet other agents, talk with other agents to find out what they're doing, what's working for them. And also here at the FMO level, you know, we have all of these tools and resources. We can help you to make sure that you are going to be compliant, that all of those changes that are coming, we kind of handle all of that stuff on the back end. We inform you of those changes. And it's because we want you to be able to focus on what you're meant to do and what you have gotten into this industry to do. And that is selling these plans, meeting with clients, getting to know them, getting to have that relationship with them so that they are comfortable with you and that they can get a better plan than they might have gotten elsewhere with someone who just valued the sale versus the person. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, here at Ritter, we're really excited to be partnering with Integrity. And Mm -hmm. let's talk about the Integrity core values, because we hear a lot about these on the Integrity Inspire podcast, which I think something all agents should listen to and watch. There's usually a pretty good mix of audio and video versions of the podcast, and you can find that at integritymarketing.com. From my own experience here, too, there are so many people that I've worked with over the years, really across a variety of industries. They don't get the props and recognition that they deserve. And not only because they're great mentors and leaders, but they really all contributed to my own personal philosophy of what giving back really means. So I'm grateful that I'm able to translate those lessons to agents in the field. But in terms of the integrity core values, the first one is integrity. Right. And that's that's really about people, right? So from our incredible employees and partners, their clients, we really want everyone to have a voice. And so I think, and I hate to talk about the pandemic again, but I'm sure you'll agree that really served as a litmus test for all of us with regard to these core values. I mean, oh, yeah. alone as we all felt, collectively, we were all in this unknown together and it mm-hmm. helped magnify inequities. I think it's sort of, required us to work on ourselves while also continuing to help others. That that was a challenge, I think, for me anyway, and for a lot of agents. Yeah, it definitely was. And I think there is a lot that has been brought to light because of what we went through as a nation through the pandemic, that now you're starting to see a more progressive take on legislation coming through, but also legislation that really at the heart of what we do, we can say that these are really good things because what it means is that we are leaning into the idea of quality care and access mm-hmm. to care, making sure that everyone has the ability to get the health care that they need. You want to be able to have everybody covered because when you have that coverage, you get overall better health outcomes because of that coverage. 
Yeah, absolutely. And a little background, you know, we talked about radio and past careers. And uh, before I started in insurance, I was in radio, TV and newspapers for many years. And our client was literally, well, the advertiser, but also the listener, mm -hmm. the viewer and the reader. Right. So there's a lot of similarities with the insurance broker and the client. If we kind of harken back to radio, and I know you can relate to this too, that really <laughs> served as a reflection of the community. Yeah. And, you know, we made the voices of the community and their music come out of the speakers, whether you were at work or in the car or on the beach. I mean, I started in college radio and went pro on many top 40 stations after. We used to do these remote broadcasts and concerts. Yeah. And I don't know if you ever did like a sticker stop where you'd get on the air and you'd say, hey, I'm at the corner of, you know, <laughs> Fifth and Main and come by, get your sticker. And we handed out CDs on the corner and we sponsored charity events and I have to mention Steve Smith, who I worked with back in Phoenix at KKFR. He was one of the greatest programmers in the history of the industry. And he he gave voice to a lot of emerging hip hop artists on Power 92. And then in the 90s, he took New York City's Hot 97 to number one. And he passed away recently. Last year, he was still a young guy, like 61. Wow. And I was able to attend his memorial. But he created these huge powerhouse concerts that brought the entire city together. I mean, there's a great interview with Steve from Joel Denver online at allaccess.com if you search Steve Smith KKFR. Before mm -hmm. his death, he was working on a collaborative to bring industry leaders together, really to start a more robust dialogue on how to keep radio relevant, especially mm -hmm. for the younger generations. And I hearken that back to what we do here at Ritter. I think what we're doing with our brokers here at Ritter and Integrity is not only engaging the agent community, but discussing how can we not only stay relevant, but innovative and really leading that next generation of brokers to do what's right and serve more people. Right. It's interesting that you mentioned your own experience in radio with kind of doing those community broadcasts and mm -hmm. getting out into the community because that was really at the heart of what we did when I was with WQIC. They're no longer independently owned. They kind of mm -hmm. got taken over as they do. But community was a huge part of it. And I mean, the community looked to the radio station for so much locally because a lot of the local news and the local correspondence and interaction with newspapers and other forms of media, it's gone away. So yeah, there is definitely still a desire and a want for that and a need for that. And there is definitely correlation in what we do in insurance with kind of connecting community and really bringing people together. Yeah. And it's interesting because before I officially got into insurance, I was in insurance before I knew it. And so what I mean mm -hmm. is one of the stations that I worked with was KVRY KZZP, which for many years was owned by NCI, which was Nationwide Communications Incorporated. Okay. And that parent company was Nationwide Insurance in Columbus, Ohio. And so everyone at the radio station would wear their NCI lapel pins, <laughs> much like our integrity partners do. And, you know, this is back in the mid 90s. So their tagline was only the best people. And they reflected a lot of the same core values that we follow here at Ritter and Integrity now. But yeah, I agree with you. I mean, finding ways to give back to the community is key. In my career after radio and alongside that career, I also did some fundraising for PBS television for about 10 years on Channel 8 through Arizona State University and later worked with Gannett, which, as you know, is yes. one of the largest newspaper media companies. And so a lot of executives that I worked with, like Sue Clark Johnson, John Zittich, they all shared a philosophy of community giving. And then I went into the credit union industry for about four years as the PR director for Desert Schools, which is now Desert Financial Credit Union. And their community development philosophy was really born as part of the credit union movement. It's They refer to it as people helping people. Mm -hmm. And so credit unions we're talking about comparison between credit union industry and insurance, credit unions by nature, they're different from big banks in that they're not for profit cooperatives. So I yeah. learned a lot about integrity and acts of kindness from, from their executives, you know, Susan mm -hmm. Frank, Jeff Mishi, these executives that were mission focused, both at work and at home, Ron Amstutz, who raised millions for children's hospitals. And that really inspired me to emulate that spirit of giving back through my own career. 
helping underserved communities was a tradition that I continued when I became marketing director for the Heard Museum of Native Cultures and Art, working alongside people that did a lot of outreach into tribal communities. And that's another area here at Ritter that we're working with different carriers to do outreach on the reservations, especially here in California and up in the Four Corners region in Arizona and New Mexico. There's a huge need for quality care and access to care with underserved communities like the Native American community. Okay. So that's interesting that you mentioned kind of reaching out and service-oriented opportunities. I mean, I feel like that is something that going along with leadership and how you want your company to be, I visibly see that in the way that Craig Ritter leads our company, the choices that he makes and the way that he leads his life that then trickles down Mm -hmm. into our organization here. I see it with directors such as yourself. And it really does, you know, the leadership has to be so strong in order to implement these core values because they are carrying those values out themselves. And that's really what helps people like me and, you know, our team here to carry out and continue the mission and to incorporate those values then as our own and teach others how to do that and kind of pass it on. So it's interesting to hear that you've had that experience in the past from other career opportunities as well. Yeah, one of the things I learned at the herd was that in Navajo, the word ahineka means bringing or gathering people together in a collaborative spirit. Hmm. And, you know, they call me the Belagana Hostin or a Che, <laughs> which is like a non native, an older non native man. Okay. Or as uh, my New York relatives would say, an Alta Cocker in Yiddish. So more on that later. But, uh, okay. you know, you mentioned Craig. I mean, I started with Ritter about 10 years ago in Arizona. Mm-hmm. The whole Ritter family, Cal and Craig and Scott, Dave, April, mm-hmm. so many others based in Pennsylvania. They really pioneered InsureTech nearly 25 years ago. We had the industry's original quote engine, which was basically Craig's invention. It was an Excel sheet. Mm -hmm. And it really paved the way for these compliant, easy to use online enrollment tools that we offer. So I'm really thankful. I mean, they brought me in. They made me feel very welcome and part of something bigger from the start. And it's just amazing how much we've grown together. Yeah. And I think that is, it sounds a little hokey when you say, oh, become part of the family. But yeah, right. It it really is. You know, I felt a very different vibe here when I came. Now, I came on in 2016. Mm -hmm. We were a little bit larger. I want to say we're probably at the 75, 80 employee level. So, still a little bit smaller, but also way bigger than what I was used to at the radio station I worked at. I just wanted to work with a team and yeah. I was absolutely blown away. When you think of the way that a business, the ideal business model, how you should run a company, how you want your employees to feel inside of that company, I think they've absolutely nailed it. And I think that joining in with integrity, it's kind of been seamless as far as still getting that same feeling. Those values are still there. They're laid out a little more, you know, congruently in the pillars. There's a little more architecture there, but it's still, that was the principle that we operated on prior to joining with Integrity. So (laughs) it was a great fit. I mean, as Craig said, when we became an Integrity partner, we already had those values. So it was just Mm -hmm. a seamless match. Back in 2014, we launched the Western Division of Ritter based in Scottsdale, Arizona, and we grew that office team to cover 14 states including California. And today, as Brian Adams says, we're just getting started, right? I mean, we're we're partnering with Integrity. And for those that always ask us, you know, who is Integrity? They are the nation's leading independent distributor of life and health insurance products. And we're really working with all the partners to create that next generation of insure tech, you know, the innovations that are there to serve more people and change lives and really create stability for families. We serve millions and millions of Americans through our broker channel. And I really do think that insurance is a people business. Like you said, Sarah, it's a family business. It thrives on face-to-face conversations, trust building, transparency, which is why with all the new technology, I'd say our industry is going to remain built on a foundation of person-to-person interactions around that kitchen table. Oh, Um, absolutely. There's so many aspects of it. 
I watched Craig's conversation with a couple other industry leaders on what's going on with AI. I know everybody seems to be very terrified of what AI is going to do to the industry, but there is a person-to-person human contact that I think is always going to be integral to insurance because of the fact that you have so many different facets of what you need to know from your client before you're even able to get them into an actual proper plan. You can't replace that relationship. I don't think that the client wants to see that replaced. Again, talking about outcomes, the outcome of a human interaction that can understand all of the strange little things that we as humans tend to do, you know, the vibes that we put off reading Mm -hmm. the room, all of those little things. You can't teach AI to do that. Anyone who's met with a client, they're able to be able to pick up on some of those visual cues along with what they're being told. And then you build this relationship over time. And that's what builds your business, essentially. So family, very integral part of the entire process. And I don't think that's that's going anywhere anytime soon. That's a great point. I think, like you mentioned, I think the technology works alongside the agent. Mm -hmm. You know, here at Ritter, we launched MediCareful back in the day, which is now Shop and Enroll. And that was a real lifesaver during the pandemic just to be able to compliantly quote and enroll the beneficiaries online. But you're right. I mean, people ask me about AI and here at Integrity, we're rolling out AI tools for agents to streamline information. But not as a replacement of the agent. It's really like their secret sauce out in the field to be able to compile information in a more streamlined way and get to know what they're walking into. Right. So I'm, I, I'm excited about that, you know, to have that app where you can walk into a house and you know that you've talked to Mr. Jones four mm-hmm. months ago about his kid who's a football player and they have three dogs. And, you know, it helps bring all of that together for the broker. Right. And I think it's a better experience for the beneficiary as well, because all of that information is there. There's those little tidbits that, you know, you need to remember like, okay, you're allergic to cats. You have allergy shots that you're getting any (laughs) little thing that you can pick up from these conversations. Yeah. But to be honest, you know, for some of us who don't do as well with maybe recalling those details and points on the spot, that's going to be a lifesaver to be able to have that information right there that you can review in real time. So oh, yeah. that's pretty cool. No doubt. No doubt. So let's talk a little bit about service. We're talking about giving back and why it's important to the mm-hmm. Integrity family and to our agents and to Ritter. When we joined Integrity, we all received two full days of paid time off for volunteering. I mean, that's above and beyond vacation time. Right, right. You know, Integrity is great. I mean, they support every employee who wants to spend time serving their community. And I'm really excited about the new Integrity Foundation that was just announced. I think it's led by Mary Elise Farah. She's in Dallas, and that's going to help us serve even more communities around the nation uh, with programs for kids and seniors and underserved segments. So that was a huge development when that was announced just last month. Um, Right. And that's something that As a mom, I have a 10-year-old daughter, and I am constantly looking for ways that I can get the both of us involved in something in the community. And it's not easy. It's not easy to find those opportunities. So to be able to have your own company, okay, we're going to do this. We want to get you involved. We want to get your entire family involved. That's amazing because it gives us the ability to go and do, which is what service is all about. Yeah, I had this wild idea yesterday that sort of this vision about the Integrity Foundation. Maybe they could do like a Route 66 tour, go to all the forgotten cities along. Because Route 66, it's classic America, right? I mean, it goes from Chicago to Santa Monica. So they could start at Lake Michigan and end up here in Southern California and maybe even team up with like a fintech organization like CUNA. And we talked about credit unions. CUNA is the Credit Union National Association. And they also work with credit unions for kids. So they do fundraising for children's hospitals. I have this vision of like a fintech meets insurtech partnership. So maybe that's something that they could do, you know, be awesome. I mean, why not put it out there? You never know. Yeah, I mean, I was just up in Albuquerque a few months ago and I met with WellCare and they're doing a lot with a smaller provider company called Western Sky up there. And they're doing a lot to help the lives of natives up in the Four Corners region. So that's another example of where a carrier could hop on board with the mission-focused doings of 
of what integrity is involved with and, and what Ritter's always done, and that's giving back to the communities. Right. That's a huge part of really grassroots marketing. It sounds kind of silly to think of a huge brand doing, you know, grassroots marketing or community outreach, but really this is in today's day and age in 2023, that is what people, it's not even something that they like to see it. It's almost what they expect. So Mm -hmm. you kind of need to have a little more substance to your why you need to have a why. (laughs) Um, (laughs) There are so many opportunities out there to be able to give back and do these things. And, you know, people really look at that. They look on that highly. They expect it. And it is also a really great way to meet people in the community that might need your services or even partners that you might be able to talk with. And like you were saying, fintech. Maybe you'll need a financial advisor or two that you guys can both kind of throw each other business. That's oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, the spirit of giving, it goes back to your upbringing, too. I remember back to my bar mitzvah, for example, right here in Southern California, wonderful man by the name of Rabbi Hersher taught the concept of shining your light or in Hebrew, it's tikkun olam, which means repairing the world. And that's rooted in really making the world a better place through tzedakah, charity, good deeds, responsible action. Um, And that's just another concept from my own upbringing that I really love. And that's the idea of also acts of loving kindness, which in Hebrew is gemilut hasadim, which means actually donating your time and your physical presence. So, you know, it's really easy to just write a check for something, but being present like in a food line or visiting seniors is an example and doing these things without ever expecting anything in return. Yeah. Doing them anonymously. Yeah. Money is easy. Boots on the ground is a lot different. And for some of these organizations, that is really what they need. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting uh, though, that you mentioned your bar mitzvah. I just watched, you are so not invited to my bar mitzvah on Netflix. (laughs) And I have to say, I really enjoyed it. It's my daughter's favorite movie. I had no idea that there was so much involved in the whole bar mitzvah process. I think a lot of it in pop culture tends to, you see the party, but you don't see all of the rest of it that's behind it. And that service aspect is a huge part of it. Yeah, I mean, it's a coming of age ceremony and it's great. You know, it stays with you for your entire life. And one other example, going back to Ritter, was in Scottsdale, our team used to visit assisted living homes with our agents. Okay. So we would go and we'd play bingo, we'd deliver I remember coffee. remember that. Yeah, we started the Ritter Cares charity yes. brand back yep. in the day. And we sort of developed this as the philanthropic arm of Ritter. And that's a concept that I taught my own kids, plus my nieces, my nephews when they were younger. And here in California in the West, even my partner and I, we volunteer for events at Balboa Park. We donate fresh food to the homeless. We work at food banks. We support local charities throughout the Southwest. So, you know, those are values that are lifelong and and they stay with you. Yeah. And you just gave a lot of really great examples that if you are not sure how to get started, or what you can do. Jason just gave you about 15 of them. So, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, but that's the thing. It's once you get started with it, it is so fun. And you just, you meet the neatest people. You get to hear a lot of great stories. So if that's your thing, if you like hearing stories, you get to talk to some amazing people and you get the great feeling, you know, knowing that you're doing something good. That is probably the best part about it. Just being able to give back. Yeah, definitely. So we're talking about the integrity core values. The the second to the last one is respect. Yes. And I think Aretha Franklin probably said it best, right? <laughs> and there was that other song talking about radio from Erasure, Give a Little Respect from the 80s. I'm not going to sing yes. it, but you know what I'm talking about. You're not um, going to sing it? Oh, darn. <laughs> you know, Give a little respect. Yeah. <laughs> okay, then you made me do it. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's awesome. But yeah, I mean, we talk about this all the time in our meetings. Respect, it's really earned through merit and through action. It's one thing to just give lip service, but you want to be out there doing it. And so I think it's important as an agent to show respect to your client, right? So no matter what situation they're in. And I said, I was an agent for many years on the life side, PNC, health. I worked at Bankers Life, Mutual of Omaha, State Farm. And I know firsthand what it was like to visit a mansion in the morning and a very low income housing project at night as an agent. And just a short little story, 
There was a couple that I visited as a life agent. They were in their 70s and clearly they were hoarders and they suffered from mental illness. And I had no idea about this walking into the appointment. So the wife, she had covered her entire walls in old newspapers and she had cardboard boxes covering the floors and the windows. And she even had like each blade of her ceiling fan wrapped in clear plastic. So it was like a I didn't know what was going on. And I walked into this appointment. Clearly, they were afraid to leave the house. We did the needs analysis. They had a sizable amount of cash saved that they never used. And I could have easily sold them a critical illness policy or a guaranteed issue life product. But instead, I just sat there. We chatted, visited for a while, and then I left. And they didn't really need anything from me other than some respect and some companionship. As Danny Ford talked about, too, it's when there's no objection to overcome, sometimes they just need your presence. Yeah, a little bit of fact finding and information. It's funny that you say that because before I got into the radio industry, I was in hospitality. I worked at a hotel as the front desk manager, and we would get our regulars that would call just to talk. Yeah, They would tell you about what they were doing that day. Yeah, they'd ask about the rates, but it was they wanted that person to talk to. And I think that like you said, with respect, it doesn't cost anything to be kind. You can talk with them. You can answer their questions. It doesn't cost anything to do that. And it might not seem like it is that big of a thing to you, but to that person, that could be everything. Yeah, I agree. And well, as an agent too, you have to make money, right? So yeah. knowing that yeah, going in. You can't in, do that with everybody. I'm yeah, not I mean, saying, you know, go out and be a fuzzy little care bear to everybody. But, <laughs> you know, right. there is a time and a place for that. And you kind of have to know when that is. Yeah, like kind of build it into your day. You know, when I was mm-hmm. an agent at Bankers, we had to make 20 appointments a week. And if we were lucky, we went to see five or six of them and closed two or three. And so you build that into your workflow where you know you're going to be sort of just visiting with someone maybe for one or two of those appointments. Right. But it's knowing when to walk away, too. So that can be difficult. Yeah. But that's one of those things, too, that if you have that time where, yes, you are talking with them one time, okay, this isn't the day, maybe the next time's the day. Even if you walk away from a situation or an appointment They might remember that they might be the person that calls you when their son needs something, when their aunt needs something. It's kind of, but you do have to play that very carefully. Cause like you said, you know, you are an agent, you are in this to make money. We do realize that. Yeah. And asking for referrals too. That was a big point. We, we just attended the senior summit here in Temecula, California, which is a big gathering of agents from all over the West. And their keynote speaker talked about not being afraid to ask for that referral. Because, you know, that couple that you sat with just as a companion might then, like you said, refer their son or daughter who Mm -hmm. just had a kid and needs two million in life insurance. You just never know. Right, right. Definitely want to try and pursue that when you have the ability to. But also, you know, making sure you're correctly interacting with people. You don't want to be the agent that this person is telling somebody about one or two years down the road that didn't listen to them, didn't make them feel respected, looked down on where they lived, that kind of thing. Yeah. And I think too, hearkening back to the younger agents that we're trying to recruit, especially Gen Z and millennials, is to really teach them not to be afraid of the phone. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I provided agents throughout the years was phone training. And that was a direct translation from my radio background was training these agents to just pick up the phone and make 100 phone calls to clients and to leads and to have fun with them. It's funny you're saying that and I am I can feel my skin crawling. I know, right? Because I that still, was one I thing I was so excited about when I left the hotel for the radio station. <laughs> yeah. I was so excited that I was not going to have to take those phone calls anymore because along with the good and the great and the wonderful people that you got that called just to talk, You did also have those people that berated you over the phone. And that was the part of that that I did not enjoy. So, yeah. And, you know, as the technology changes, it's different channels. So when you talk about radio, like, does anyone even listen to the radio under 40 years old anymore? Probably. I don't know. I might get into trouble for saying that. I don't know. But, you know, now they're listening on streaming and Mm iHeart and different channels. Likewise, with 
insurance, you know, at Bankers, I used to run with this guy that had paper apps and he was like Willie Loman. He'd show up at the house with oh, these two huge leather cases of every app so that if the client asked for a certain product, he had the app. But now it's done online or on your iPad or they're trying to phase that out. I think in one of the Integrity podcasts, they talked about how there are some agents out there that are still faxing applications. It's like, what year is this, right? Yeah, yeah. Ugh. There are some doctor's offices and even this is a great example. My daughter just sprained her wrist this week and we needed to send in the medication permission to the school. And I was looking for the ability to be able to go into an app, upload the documents and mm -hmm. send it on its way. And oh, my goodness, we ended up having to like print out the paper copy. Fill everything out, take a photo of that, send it in an email. Then we had issues that the email wasn't being received because the file sizes were so large. So yeah. it, it's interesting just the different generations, what you're used to. You do kind of have to go out of your comfort zone to embrace the other technologies that have come about, whether or not they are newer or whether they may be a little bit older. Because I know mentioned this too, I think in one of the previous episodes we did, my dad, I cannot see him ever owning a cell phone. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> and yeah. you do have to respect the fact that, you know, there is a generation or a subset of a generation that that's probably going to be the way it is for them. And you kind of have to plan and cater the way that you do business around their needs out of respect for them as a person. Yeah, I mean, I think it's harder for Gen X, too. I mean, we're yeah. my generation. I mean, I went through college without a computer, like by two years, I just missed that wave. And now we're doing everything on our phones. Right. And now with AI coming out, we kind of bridged the gap, at least Gen Xers kind of bridged the gap between going from no technology, <laughs> hardly to a lot of technology. But you know, yeah. if you're a Gen Z, you grew up with it. So if you become a new agent as a Gen Z, -er, it's not going to be much of a stretch for you to work online. Right. Those are some interesting trends. And so we talk about partnership, which is the last core value. And that I think that means different things to different people, too. And what I've learned here at Ritter is that it means that our core values are really aligned with all our other integrity partners. That's really stood out to me in the last two years. Yeah. And that ultimately translates to our agents and, and to their clients. Absolutely. And that's something that, I mean, we knew a lot of these different partners and organizations before, but I never would have guessed that we had so much in common with them prior to any of this. And also just the idea of getting so many heads together in a room that we do the same thing, might go about it in a couple different ways. Mm -hmm. But the innovation that comes out of that is absolutely incredible. Just like you said, with the foundation, all of these new things that are coming out from the partners, I get really excited about them because it just sounds like there are a ton of ideas being bounced off of each one of the partners. Yeah, and I love how each of the partners has been able to maintain their own brand identity and, and bring mm -hmm. their own value to the collective integrity family. It's really this idea that we can we can all do a little more and serve the most people and talk about mm -hmm. life and health and wealth. And but with a twist, it's like through mentoring okay. and education, like you said, tech, the latest innovations. It's it really is innovating insurance. I think that was one of integrity's earlier taglines. And it holds true even more so today with all of the new things that they're rolling out. I like that it is more than just a tagline for them, too, that they yeah. they say it, but then they also back it up and do it. And it's been really cool to watch the progression from, you know, when it was announced that Integrity was going to be buying us to what it is now. I mean, and also being able to keep the branding and all of that. That's a huge thing because I think individually, we all have worked really hard to make each individual brand and company what it is. And I love that they respect that fact. We respect what you've done as partners, but also how can we come together? Like you said, do a little bit more, go a little bit higher to the next level, you know, mm -hmm. and, and see what we can do together. Yeah, it goes back to that phrase, Tikkun Olam, which is repairing the world. And on the insurance side, especially with the Integrity Foundation and just merely engaging with all our agents in person, I think that's really key and, and listening and taking action and just keeping current on industry trends and what we can do as brokers to help our clients. And being on the FMO side, what can we do to help 
our brokers maximize their marketing, their revenue, and their influence in their communities. Yeah. And that's one thing that we talked a little bit about how integrity uses those pillars to kind of motivate us. But how do they go about motivating agents? What do they do with that? Yeah, I think it's leading by example. And as we've talked about very eloquently during this podcast, it's helping people have access to care, as you mentioned, and access to the quality care that they deserve. So, you know, we're not just selling a policy. We're really brokering somebody into a plan that they need to help them improve their quality of life. Right. It's kind of like we said in the beginning, you know, knowing your why, remembering your why, but also making sure that that why is is the right why. The why and the how, right? Yeah. So you got to have your why, but then you got to ask how, and, and then you really want to have those steps, those core values to be able to deliver on your why. So, you know, just reviewing the core values again, integrity, family, service, respect, and partnership. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are the values that you're going to see throughout all of our partner organizations and working together, I think we're having a massive impact and I can't wait to see what what the next chapter brings. Definitely. Well, I think we covered a lot of ground here. I think you answered quite a few questions. We only got off on maybe one or two tangents there. (laughs) Just a few, Um, yeah. (laughs) The last thing that I will ask you is, is there any advice that you can give for agents for this AEP? Well, you know, outside of pounding the pavement and staying consistent, I would recommend a good book to them. There's a book by Fareed Zakaria called 10 Lessons for a Post-Pandemic World. And there's a chapter in there on technology and how the pandemic was really like our societal test for can we work hybrid? Can we work in the office? Can we go to an, an appointment and enroll somebody electronically? And the answer is yes, we passed the test, but now everyone's still trying to figure out where they fit within that dynamic. So Mm -hmm. my advice to agents would be maybe read that book and figure out where their comfort level is technologically, push the envelope a little bit, and at the end of the day, continue building those personal relationships with clients. Okay. I think I'm going to have to check out that book because I haven't heard of that one yet. So yeah, it's good. I I keep referring back to it. He had some good things to say in there. Okay. Well, Jason, thank you so much for coming on the podcast again, talking about the integrity values and definitely look forward to having you back on and wishing you the best this AEP out on the West Coast from all of us here on the East Coast. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sarah. Again, I'm grateful and I I appreciate the invitation. Thanks again to Jason Myers. He's our West Director of Sales here at Ritter Insurance Marketing. And also, as you just heard, a wealth of information on insurance sales and marketing. If you enjoyed this episode, I hope you'll follow along with our show. We've got more interviews planned for the future. And that way, you won't miss out on any of those conversations. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen today. We will see you next episode. The Agent Survival Guide podcast is a production of Ritter Insurance Marketing, an integrity company. This episode was written and produced by me, Sarah Rupel. Script editing by Emily Markovic. Podcast design by Urban Rivera. Artwork by Vivian Zhao. Follow along with our show wherever you like to listen. Rate and review our show on Apple or Spotify. 